Hey, Happy Friday. If you hear anything weird or see anything weird, it is because I am doxiting this little cutie, the agent of chaos, so that might show up in the video. Anyway, this week we learned that nobody is making apps for the Apple Vision Pro, Intel and AMD teamed up to fight ARM, and Amazon announced a whole bunch of new Kindles. Welcome to the Friday Checkout. This video was sponsored by Brilliant. Okay, for my first story of the week, app analytics firm AppFigures pointed out that there are basically no new apps for the Apple Vision Pro. In this brutal chart, you can see the weekly releases of new native Vision Pro apps compared to macOS apps on the Mac App Store, just for context. On the week that the Vision Pro launched, there were 150 new apps, but that went down to just one by the end of March. Meanwhile, the Wall Street Journal shows a longer time horizon with monthly numbers, also via app figures. And this one shows both native apps, which are specifically made for the Vision Pro only, versus other ones that I suppose are, for example, iPad apps, ported over with perhaps some slightly extended functionality. And last month, there were only two new native ones. Ouch! App Figure says that they counted 523 so-called vision-only apps, plus 1,288 non-native ones for a total of only 1,800 or so. Yikes. Now, Apple claims that they are 2,500 apps for the Vision Pro, but App Figure says that actually the difference might be because some of the apps are used so little that they just can't detect them which I think somehow makes this even worse. Now, I actually talked to the developer of one of the apps that is one of the top 20 apps on the Apple Vision Pro. It is one that is constantly featured in the App Store, for example, and I asked him how it's actually going. He said that unlike on other VR platforms where you can port your app over with relative ease, the first problem with the Vision Pro is that it requires a completely new app. Many of the cross-platform frameworks do not work on the Vision Pro at all, plus with hand tracking and eye tracking, the interaction models are so different that everything has to be completely redesigned and rethought anyway. So they say you have to build a completely new app for the Vision Pro, which cost them something like 50,000 bucks, and they say that from sales, they made less than 10,000 so far. Ouch. Apparently, a lot of the other VR platform companies like Sony or HTC also directly pay developers to port their apps over, but Apple, for the most part, has not so far. The developer said that they didn't regret things yet because they wanted to really build a relationship with Apple, plus they wanted to try out this interesting new paradigm and this new platform, so things aren't all bad, but yeah, I'm not surprised that other developers aren't rushing to bring their stuff over to the Vision Pro yet. Anyway, Mark Gurman says that Apple is working on a lower-end Vision model, costing around $2,000, that would skip the creepy eye stuff on the outside, but they're also working on smart glasses on par with Meta's Ray-Ban, although those are scheduled weirdly late for 2027. And even weirder, the company is also working on AirPods with cameras to identify things too. AirPods with cameras? Is Apple okay? Anyway, for my second story of the weekend, a pretty surprising one at that, Intel and AMD have just announced that they're actually best friends. The two formed a new x86 ecosystem advisory group aimed at fighting off ARM chips from Qualcomm, Apple, and various cloud companies. The alliance also includes other companies like Broadcom, Dell, Google, HP, Lenovo, Meta, Microsoft, Oracle, Red Hat, Tim Sweeney of Epic Games, and Linus Torvalds of the Linux Foundation. And what I find funny is that many of these companies are actively working on ARM chips themselves. Anyway, Lisa Su said that the companies can align on these architectural directions. Satya Nadella said that they can shape future x86 architectural features and drive software consistency and standard interfaces. And one of the examples of what that means could be in security, where AMD and Intel have had their own approaches so far, but might harmonize going forward. Now, the companies clearly communicated this as a really big deal that we should all care about, but to be honest, I also find that they were a little bit vague on the details. I mean, there's no concrete mechanisms, no measurable goals, just a vague idea of alignment for the most part so far. That said, the message is clear. ARM is the new main enemy of both, and they'd rather fight that together than one by one. Okay, and for my third story of the week, Amazon announced perhaps the biggest refresh of the Kindle lineup ever, with some remarkable tech that's actually worth talking about. See what I did there? Remarkable. <laughs> anyway, this was the first Amazon event that was held by Panos Panay, the former head of Microsoft's Surface division, and the most interesting announcement, in my opinion, was the new $280 Kindle ColorSoft. It's a color e-ink device, and Amazon claims that they managed to avoid all the usual costs of adding color, such as increasing the page turn latency, lowering the device's resolution, or hurting contrast. That is because on top of the standard Kaleido color screen from e-ink that all the other companies use too, they claim to have also added a newly designed oxide backplane and new LED pixels, and a new way of shining light through them individually to enhance colors via nitride LEDs. Pretty cool if that works. 
And the other sort of big announcement was the new Kindle Scribe. This is Amazon's $400 remarkable competitor, which comes with a new and improved pen, new software tricks, including writing features that make sense of your handwriting and do AI summaries of each page that you scribble down on and more. Although unlike remarkable, this does not have color. Panos also showed off a new, bigger and faster version of the popular Paperwhite for $160, which also has an oxide thin film transistor display technology for better contrast. And meanwhile, at the lower end, there's also a new entry-level Kindle for $110 too. Overall, a pretty productive first event for Panos. Okay, as for the release monitor, we'll start with a new and updated iPad mini. The seventh generation model comes with an A17 Pro chip now. It gets new color options, a bump to 128 gigs of base storage, thankfully. It gets support for Apple Pencil, and what else? Apple also added Apple Intelligence. Nothing shall be left un-AI'd, and the price is still $499, so that's pretty nice. Next, Sonos announced a breakthrough new Arc Ultra soundbar and the Sub 4. They included a unique transducer technology from a startup that they acquired for a reported $100 million, and Sono says that this is one of the most significant breakthroughs in audio engineering in nearly a hundred years. I have no way of fact-checking that, but those are some pretty big words. And also this week, Vivo announced three new phones in its X200 series. We already knew from last week that these would feature the new MediaTek Dimensity 9400 chip, and now here they are. But this week we've learned that they'd also feature long-range Bluetooth that allows users to send voice messages between compatible phones at up to 2 kilometers and SOS texts at up to 4 kilometers. Bluetooth with a 4 kilometer range? That is really cool. I wonder if you could make a mesh network of sorts with this. Okay, and moving on to the brief, Oppo has confirmed that its upcoming Find X8 series will support a similar camera button to the iPhone 16, including even swipe gestures for zooming. Entirely unsurprising, but somehow also impressively quickly copied in my opinion. And talking of teasers, Samsung released a quick one for its upcoming Galaxy Fold 6 special edition phone coming next Monday, which is a thinner model that's going to be exclusive to Korea and China. Okay. And also this week, the FTC has made cancelling subscriptions less of a pain with a new click to cancel rule. This makes it mandatory to make unsubscribing easy in the US at least, which could be a pretty huge deal. And in more regulatory news, Xbox will now start selling games directly in its Android app next month. I mean, they technically could have done this before as well, but I guess the implication is that now that Google has lost its court case, Microsoft won't have to pay the 30% Google tax on all of the purchases, so maybe now it's actually gonna be worth doing it for them. And talking of Google, the company appears to be phasing out Fitbit. They posted on X that the at Fitbit account has been closed down and that Fitbit news will now appear on the at made by Google account. They've also stopped making Fitbit branded smart watches, so none of this is very encouraging. And moving on, Amazon has joined Microsoft and Google in signing nuclear energy deals to supply power to data centers. Amazon's news is a $500 million financing deal for X Energy Reactor, a nuclear reactor and fuel technology company. Meanwhile, Meta just got the largest battery in Arizona online and hooked it up to a solar farm to supply a data center that it's building too. AI requiring us to rebuild our power grid shows that things are getting pretty serious. As a techie, I really want to understand how tech like this works under the hood, and if you do too, I recommend checking out Brilliant. Courses like how LLMs or large language models work cover the current wave of AI extremely well, but Brilliant also has fantastic courses on neural networks in general, quantum computing, and many other areas of computer science, and all of them are designed to help you think like an engineer or a scientist. Brilliant is a fantastic online learning community designed to help you learn STEM skills. This includes not just computer science topics, but also those around maths, physics, engineering, and more, so you can get a complete picture. The specialty of Brilliant is that all of their courses are designed from the ground up with interactivity in mind, so they break complicated topics into smaller chunks, which you then practice right away. Not only is this proven to be way more effective at actually making you remember what you've just learned, it's also just way more fun than simply passively consuming information, so you're more likely to stick with it. To try everything that Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org TFC or click on the link in the description. You'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription if you choose to get one. So happy learning and I'll see you next Friday.